there is a cloud of witness that works in the heavenly realm, but it also functions on the earth and it was formed from the earth. There was a pillar of cloud that led them through the desert. This pillar was light and darkness. It was um, protecting them. It was leading them. It was leading them through night and through day. At night, it was fire. In the day, <laughs> it was a cloud. Please, we are talking about time. Time has night and day. Night means not good. Day means, yeah, right, light. You can work. You can go for it. So this is all pictures of what's coming. But he says this cloud led them night and day. What is this cloud? So he protected Israel and he troubled the Egyptians. So this cloud is something that is beyond this realm and it's beyond the heavenly clouds. It's beyond space clouds. It is the cloud of glory that literally came down as a pillar. Exodus 16 verse 10 explains to you what this cloud is. And it came to pass as Aaron spake, to the whole congregation of the children of Israel. And they looked toward the wilderness and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. What was that? God came out of the realm of above the heavens in a cloud form. And where did this function? On the earth. And this is revealing that my glory is going to come on the earth. So Moses was led the people through the desert with this cloud. And I think this cloud fascinated him. Now we have to look at Moses because Moses is a very unique figure. 1 Corinthians 10 says, these people, they all drank from the rock, which is Christ. Christ is the rock that followed them. But he also says they were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Baptized means you're immersed. You're in this bubble of life and light within darkness and death. And this is the foreshadowing of what's coming. And how did it happen? They were all baptized into the cloud. They looked and they saw the glory cloud. This must have fascinated I'm telling you, Moses. So Moses was called on a mountain of fire. There was a bush, a tree that is burning. Come on, guys. In the beginning, there was a tree of life and there was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now there's this tree on the mountain and the tree is burning. And uh, Moses is there face to face with God. And he says to God, you know my name. I am drawn from water. In other words, I am, I am in covenant with the rainbow. I'm in covenant with your bow. And on the mountain, oh, it was like thick clouds. And it was, nobody was able to go up there except Moses. And his name is drawn from water, called at the bush of fire. Now this mountain story started in Mount Moriah, when Abram heard the call of God and he was willing to obey God. Where did he obey God? On a mountain. He was willing to sacrifice his only son, the Bible says, and he, it wasn't his only son, but it was his only begotten son. The other one didn't count in the inheritance. And he was willing to bring a sacrifice of blood with his only son. And God said, this is my man. And a new realm started. And this realm worked out in Moses. And Moses was here like, okay, I'm drawn from water and I'm called before fire. But show me your glory. So what Abram saw was going to bring forth the glory. The first sacrifice, sacrifice is in the temple, a sense of 
we are yearning for God and we want God's glory to come down. We, we miss the glory. We miss the glory. And this is why Abel's sacrifice was accepted because he offered blood. And now because of that sacrifice, now the earth is not just cursed with water and fire. It's also cursed with blood. The earth calls for blood. So here on a mountain, Abraham comes and he brings the right offering. And God has said, good. The next step in progression towards the glory on earth, towards man receiving the glory of God, which is above the heavens, is now stepping in. And this is where we pick it up in Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come to thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and I believe thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. So God came in this thick cloud of glory and he spoke to Moses so that Moses can speak to the people. And we know what happened when he came down. He was transformed. Why? The glory transforms you. So we need the glory. Now, <laughs> Moses is like, he's in the cloud of glory. In Exodus 19, verse 16, he says, And it came to pass, please listen to all the numbers. It's not just numbers. It's not like, you know, God didn't know what to, to do with it. It's his DNA. It's his fingerprints on creation. And it came to pass on the third day, the morning, Oh, Abraham went to the Mount Moriah. Moriah is the same place where Christ was crucified. And he says, on the third day, he lifted up his eyes and he saw the mountain. Now, and it came to pass on the third day, in the morning, <laughs> the third day is going to bring the morning. And Mary came to the grave the third day and early in the morning. This is not coincidence. It's God's fingerprint plan. And on the third day in the morning that there were thunders, lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mountain and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, a voice of a trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that is in the camp trembled. You cannot get away from these symbols. If you follow the symbols, you'll understand the patterns. Verse 15. And Moses went up into the mount and a cloud covered the mount. Moses went up into the mount <laughs> and a cloud covered the mountain. Moses, he became the first witness of the cloud of witness forming. Where was this cloud of witness formed? In the, the glory cloud. And the glory of the Lord abode upon the Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it six days. Six days creation, the seventh day rest. So God's timing is like in generation days. One day is a thousand years, a thousand years, one day. So for six days, guys, we've already stepped into the seventh day. We're about in the first hour of it. So when is it going to be? In this next century, it's definitely going to come. <laughs> but you, nobody knows exact time. We, nobody knows exact generation. But I'm telling you, it's right at hand. And he says, six days, the cloud covered it. And the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain. And the eyes of the children of Israel just saw it. Oh, my word. Now, Moses was on the mountain with God face to face 40 days and 40 nights. Now, 40 is like, come on, it rained 40 days, 40 nights. They were in the desert 40 years. Um, Jesus was in the desert 40 days. And after the cross, it's 40 years. It's all symbols and patterns that we cannot mix up. We cannot take the time behind the cross from the cross to 70, 80 and apply it to our generation. Then you do not even understand the cloud. You do not 
get the realms. You do not understand the time you are in. So what is going to happen? You will be saved and you will be touched by the Spirit and, you know, your needs will be met and God's going to bless you and everything. But the purpose of God is not going to work in your life. So we have to step into the realm of the purposes of God and understand because creation is still groaning.